So you build X-wing fighters, and I fly them. That's that's cool. I like and that's great. I like that. I'm I'm I'm, I'm liking this already. Um, a couple of things. Uh, Number one, uh, the, there's no need for wings in space, so I think that's a difference. <laughs> yes, that's <is> true. <laughs> uh, and if you look at how the X-wing fighter is thrusted, I'm guessing, I don't know, but I'm guessing it might be uh, nuclear electric propulsion based on the design of the vehicle, but again, I, I don't know uh, how the X-wing is designed. Uh, but I will tell you uh, that we, we, as an agency, we want to go to Mars and even beyond. And of course, we're very excited about the excitement that Elon, and Elon is bringing to this, that SpaceX is bringing to this idea of humans expanding throughout the solar system. That is something that I think both of us share deeply as, 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 as a vision that we want to be able to achieve. Um, and I think, uh, I, I think that that is achievable. Now going back to the X-Wing fighter, uh, in order to achieve that for the long term and be successful, we're gonna need to start making investments in nuclear thermal propulsion and, and nuclear electric. And of course, we've been involved in the vast nuclear propulsion system as a development capability for a number of years, which is nuclear electric. Uh, the idea being that we need to get places faster. Um, and NASA has an interest in that. Um, but uh, I, I think more than anything, uh, NASA has a keen interest in human exploration. Uh, Elon Musk and SpaceX, they've done a great job at inspiring not just the nation, world in that vision, uh, and I think the partnership is going to enable us to do that. I think we both obviously love space a lot, that's for sure. Um, you know, just, space is one of those things that I think almost everyone is inspired by, and if you asked people what was the most inspiring event in history, it was probably landing on the moon. To ask people anywhere, I'd say. So, yeah, it's just something that people get around the world can get super fired up about and get excited about the future. Yeah, and the uh, future where we're space bearing civilization out there among the stars is inspiring to people everywhere in the world. Hi, Ted Chen from KNBC. Uh, back to the topic of timeline and delivery. Uh, can you both address the recent public exchange regarding the progress of Crew Dragon, in particular, and Sprite State in your tweet, implying that that progress has been compromised somehow by spaceship? Yeah, so as the NASA administrator, um, I have been focused uh, on returning to realism when it comes to cost and schedule. And uh, a lot of our programs, have not been meeting cost and schedule. Uh, and this, is, this has been developing over time. Uh, and a lot of these programs are, you know, five years old, 10 years old, that kind of thing. And so what we're trying to do is get back to a day where we have realistic cost and schedule. And so I was signaling, and I haven't done it just to SpaceX, but to all of our contractors, that we need more realism built into the development timelines. To be clear, um, the development timelines are development timelines. This is not operational yet, it is development, which means we are learning. And when you learn, timelines don't always go according to plan. So that I am very clear on that. It is also true that if you go back to 2012, 2013, 2014, there was a day we had a commercial crew program underway and the funding got cut. Um, and of course, uh, the, the timelines never changed, but the funding got cut. And so, that there are consequences when the budget doesn't meet uh, the, the, the vision. The budget doesn't meet the rhetoric. And, and the, 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 the history of that has put us in a position, and it's not just the commercial crew program, it's a lot of NASA's programs. Uh, and I am trying to make sure that if, if we're putting out key messages about what we're capable of achieving, that we are matching it with budgets. That's been a high priority of mine. I just want to make sure that we are focused on the number one highest priority for our country right now, because I, I'm the one that has to go make sure that we're buying seats, uh, Russian Soyuz seats, to, to keep a presence on the International Space Station. A couple of weeks ago, I was out in Japan. You know, we, we believe that there is a, there is a strong probability um, that they will have an astronaut on the International Space Station during the Olympics. 
But there is also a possibility if things don't go according to plan, that they will not. That's a challenge for me as the NASA administrator as I try to encourage our international partners to invest more than they ever have before in our effort to get to the moon sustainably. In other words, we want to go to the moon to stay. So in order to achieve the diplomatic goals and um, the, the strategic goals of our country to have our international partners with us in a coalition of nations to go to the moon to stay, in order to achieve that, we have to have credibility in our programs. Um, and right now, the one program that we need the most credibility in the fastest is the commercial crew program. And SpaceX is a big part of that. Um, so I think those yeah. are all important takeaways. I mean, it's important to, these are just the, the, the historical facts. It's not just a statement of fact. The, the SpaceX uh, program is within 1% of the budget. Well, so it's right on budget. Um, as Jim was, was alluding to, uh, the, the NASA request for commercial crew for several years was substantially reduced by Congress. I think in some cases by 50%. Um, so it's, it's pretty hard to stay on schedule if you've got half as much money. If we didn't spend more money, it just got, took longer. Um, and, uh, you know, the same years that uh, commercial crew was dramatically underfunded, some other unmentioned programs were overfunded, but there's, they're, yeah, so, anyway. Um, the larger point is, we're, we're gonna get this done. We're gonna get done soon, I'm gonna get done right. Hi, uh, Grant Blaisdell, co-creator of Copernic Space. Um, this is a question that alludes to two things that both of you touched. Um, there's going to be a lot of sensitive and valuable IP being shared between you guys, but also in the future collaborations you brought up Russia, for example. Um, and we've seen that NASA recently begin engaging with new tech, like blockchain technology, seemingly mainly to improve data-related trust and security. Mr. Musk, I know you're interested in this tech as well. My question is, is uh, NASA and this collaboration further looking to use this sort of tech to not only securely um, transfer and collaborate around this valuable IP, uh, but also to use it to better commercialize um, this IP on the private market as the market continues to digitize and privatize, especially for, for NASA, I think that would be cool. And also funding, also how this relates to allowing the American public fund NASA projects that aren't hitting their budget, let's say, uh, targets. Yeah, so there's a, there's a lot in that question, but, but I Sorry. think, the, no, you're good. The, the, the fundamental thing is that NASA will not share anybody's IP. If it is your IP, it is your IP. What we will do is we will learn from your test, your analysis. We will take those lessons learned um, and uh, apply those lessons learned to our other partners in a way that does not disclose your design, your systems, those kind of things. But, but to the extent we do that, it is for a reason. It is because we have to make sure that we are safely flying people. Um, because there is nothing more precious to us than the cargo uh, of our, which is our astronauts. So that, that has to be, I think, uh, a, a keen awareness for us. If, if SpaceX learns something with parachutes, if they learn something with a launch abort system, if it's a materials issue, um, we need to be able to, to share that. And, and SpaceX has been fantastic about allowing us to do that um, without giving up you know, design specifications. Uh, actually, I want to be clear. Uh, the NASA can share all of our IP with all of our IP with anyone NASA wants. There you go. It is inevitable. We'll take it. With anyone. But, 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 but to the extent, ultimately, the, 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 and, and we appreciate that, yeah, well, that's, that's very meaningful. Yeah. Um, but, but there is IP that is in the interest of the nation that we cannot be sharing with people or countries that would not have our interests at heart. And that's when it comes to making sure that we have our information technology secure and we have all the capabilities necessary to protect um, some very valuable technology. Do you have time for one more question? Okay. Just a quick follow-up, because you had mentioned that you would spend near within 1% of the commercial crew budget allotted 
And so I'm curious, uh, of that 2.6 billion originally allotted, did, did you receive all of it? And have there been any points where you have had to spend SpaceX resources you know, on your own to further the Crew Dragon program? Um, yeah, the, the, I mean, the 1% is the actual report. This is like the, NASA has to report these numbers to uh, Congress, and, and you know, it's, public, it's public information. So it's, it's not like top secret. Um, uh, and, and this is the, the, the last, uh, I was just literally informed by the you know, NASA program manager, yeah, you're working 1%. I'm like, great, that's, that's cool. Um, and we, um, we've spent, actually, I think quite a lot more than, than expected, probably on the order of hundreds of millions of dollars more, yeah. So for the contracts, I mean, it's, it's based on milestone payments, and when milestones are achieved, payments are made. Um, and of course, uh, uh, our contractors make proposals, and then we award based on those proposals. And so all of that was agreed to up front. Uh, it is absolutely true that there were certain years early, early on that um, set us back because we weren't adequately funded. We're, we're past that. We are now focused like a laser on the right things to achieve the end state that we both desire, which is American astronauts launching on American rockets. I know this is the last question, and I, I just want to say a few more things in closing, and that is this. Um, I, want, I, want to be, I want people to make no mistake uh, that NASA has an interest in seeing Starship be successful. Um, we, we have been a partner on Starship, a non-exchange of funds kind of partner, when it comes to um, aerodynamics and when it comes to testing and test facilities. Uh, certainly when it comes to uh, how we do, think about the future where, where maybe the Starship will be flying in deep space outside of Earth's orbit. And if, if that day comes, they're gonna have to communicate back to Earth. So we've been working with SpaceX to enable and test uh, deep space communication capability using NASA's deep space network. Uh, we, we, in fact, are using our resources at Mars right now. We have orbiters around Mars. We have a lander. We have a rover on Mars. We task those resources to, to find where would be the best places should Starship be successful in going to Mars. Where would be the best places to go where they would have resources, in situ resource utilization available to them. That's another capability that NASA has been working to support uh, SpaceX on, on Starship. And, and just this week, might have been last week, I don't know the date specifically, but we did award uh, to SpaceX a contract, what we call a tipping point contract, um, that enables, we will enable Starship to use NASA resources and NASA more money to figure out how to transfer fuel in orbit. That's, that's a capability that is in the national interest of the nation, but it's also a capability that enables NASA to go further. And we want partners that are willing and able to invest in that to partner with us, which is what Tipping Point is all about. And they were awarded a contract for that. Um, so it, we believe, we believe there is a day coming, whether it's, and the first, to be clear, we want commercial crew to happen at the earliest possible point. Make no mistake, I hope I've been very clear on that. Um, but we also want all of our commercial partners all of our partners to be successful in, in going further and doing more under an idea where NASA would be one customer of many customers, driving down our costs and increasing our access. Um, one customer of many customers with numerous providers that are competing on cost and innovation. Again, driving down cost and increasing access so that all of us as a nation can do more. And some of our partners are, are Starship, as I just talked about. Some of our partners are SLS and Orion. And all of us, as a nation, we will be able to do more and, 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 and they, they make each other better. And that's a positive thing. Um, but we want all of our partners to be successful and we are working for that every day. All right, thank you for the support. Uh, this is, uh, yeah, for sure, uh, Dragon and, and uh, Crew Dragon is uh, absolutely the overwhelming priority. Um, and. Uh, you know, like, as I've said publicly, is you know uh, maybe five percent of uh, SpaceX resources on uh, on Starship. Um, we do think it's something that will be uh, incredibly valuable to um, NASA in the future and to um, 
you know, and really anyone who wants to, I think it will be very important for the future of humanity in space. This is, so, um, and, and uh, we, we are transitioning into a phase, or very close to transitioning to a phase where we are in um, series production with the Crew Dragon spacecraft, which means that the engineering team can then work on a, on a new vehicle. Um, with it, without, and, and you, you, know, you, sort of, you have design and development, um, and then you transition design and development to, uh, to production and operations. Um, but then the, the design and development team should do something new. Um, this is not a conflict, it's just different teams. Um, and that's what we'll be doing um, as, as we complete the testing of, of Crew Dragon is transitioning the development team to Starship. But thanks again for your yeah, support. It's an honor. Um, thank you for having us. And I want to say to all the media here covering this, thank you. Uh, we, we need to create an environment, and, and SpaceX has been amazing at it. Create an environment where the American public, and in fact the world, gets enthusiastic about returning to deep space. Um, I, I am the first NASA administrator in history, well, at least since we've gone to the moon. I'm the first NASA administrator that doesn't have a memory of where he was or she was when we landed on the moon. Because I wasn't alive yet. Yeah, me neither. Yeah, right. Yeah. And I'm 44 years old. We cannot allow another generation to go by without people like us casting a vision that we can, in fact, have a sustainable presence on the moon, yes. that we can, in fact, get to Mars. Yeah, and because of the media here and all of your coverage of this and, and other events that we're going to be doing in the future, we're going to be able to do this. And uh, I just want to thank you for having me at this event. And I uh, look forward to, again, watching American astronauts on American rockets from American Zone. Thank you, SpaceX, for being a, a great partner. Thank you.